OWASP is the Open Web Application Security Project. They're well known for what's called the OWASP Top 10, which is a list of things that are very common and likely to happen to you in your web applications. Now, it's a web-oriented standard, and luckily it's language independent, so whether you're programming in C, Java, .NET, etc., it will still work well for you. This top 10 list is not only based on things that happen, but are also dangerous. And if you look at each of these items, like injection, there's a lot of little subcategories. So there's actually about 50 items in the top 10 list that can be traced to individual CWEs. One thing to remember is that number nine, as part of the top 10, is one that isn't checkable using a static code analysis tool. It's really all about what are the components in the software that you're delivering. For example, if you're using an open source project and it happens to have a known vulnerability, is there a patch for that and have you applied it? The OWASP top 10 are also used used by the UL2900 standard as a key component to it, and the FDA actually relies on that standard as well. So it's a great way to get started doing web security in particular. Now there's one interesting thing about it because we often feel inundated with too many static analysis violations. And the OWASP top 10 has broken down the violations based on a couple of pieces of metadata, like how exploitable is it? How prevalent is it out in the field? Is it detectable? And what happens if it does get breached? And as you can see from this chart, all of the top have been broken down with a base score. And in really good tools, you can filter these down further. So OWASP is a great way to get started in your web application security. Now I want to talk for a second about why you would use Parasoft for your OWASP top 10. And there's a couple of really good reasons. At its core, all the tools provide some checkers to check against the standard, and they have some graphs and histograms to show you some things about what you've done. But with Parasoft, we're OWASP-centric. This means that right out of the box, you can select an OWASP top 10 configuration, knowing that each of the 10 items has been covered by one or more checkers in our configuration. And we've also made the checkers fit exactly. So instead of having to scour through documentation and try and understand which obscure name for a checker applies to which item in the standard, we've handled all of that for you. We have some OWASP specific reports that are really designed around demonstrating compliance and surviving an audit. We do support Java, C and C++ and .NET as well. And we support using this risk and prioritization model. That's part of the OWASP top 10 project. And I'd like to show that to you. So this is Parasoft DTP. It's our reporting system. As you can see, there's lots of widgets here that apply to OWASP. And this dashboard is ready to go out of the box telling me I'm not complying with my standard, how many of the rules I'm complying with, how many violations I have, etc. All the usual things that you expect to see from widgets. What's unique here is that we have this risk matrix that shows me how exploitable are the items, how prevalent are they out in the field, how detectable, and what is the impact. So obviously things that are easy to exploit and have a severe impact are things that I need to worry about the most. And you can actually configure all of these widgets. You can drag them, drop them, move them, etc., and set them to be exactly what you want them to be. Now, if I click through on this, I get a basic compliance report that tells me how many non-compliant items I have in the OWASP top 10 and how many violations for each item. Now, I can actually break that down further and say, well, I only want things that are easy to exploit. And right away, the number of violations go down. Or I only want things that have a severe impact and again I'm now down to 77 violations in my test project. With that we provide a weakness detection plan. As I mentioned earlier you can see that OWASP A1 on the right hand side is covered by the following Parasoft checkers and they're all named specifically for A1 so you don't have to figure out when you see a violation which part of the standard is it for and we can see again this metadata around exploitability, detectability, etc. that's available for your audits. The other reports that we provide are a deviation report to show where you've suppressed something and what reasoning was used as well as a build 
field audit report. Together, this page with these three extra reports can all be downloaded at once with a PDF and used for your auditor to prove compliance. So Parasoft not only has complete coverage of the OWASP standard, but we've made it very easy to work with the standard, use their own risk model to prioritize your findings, and make it very, very easy to demonstrate that compliance for any form of audit.